Hello and welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. I'm Liz and today we've got something slightly different for you. We're going to be interviewing a couple called Mark and Gracie who have just, literally just, emigrated from the UK to New Zealand. We met Mark and Gracie, they did our five-day free video guide and then they went on to purchase, we've got a package called the New Zealand Calling Package and they went on to purchase that. Within that package is a private community and we just We've just been getting to know them over the last few months. It's been a fascinating journey watching them sell their house and the sale almost falling through. And then they moved into a caravan and they've got these dogs. And it's just a really lovely story that we wanted to share with you today. Mm. As you said, it was called uh, like a pet plane. And I thought like, oh, it's a plane coming over with all these pets sit- sitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sitting there smoking. You're not far off. You're not far off. I'll have a gin so, tea. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll have a whiskey with mine. <laughs> I think you're going to really like it because, like I say, they brought two dogs over from the UK to New Zealand and these dogs went on this special plane and then they were like taxied from the airport to this quarantine facility in New Zealand. It's a really, really great story and I think you're going to love it. So let's jump on in and meet Mark and Gracie. It's a drama coming to you from Taranaki, New Zealand. Hello. Daddy, I love you. Mother thanks you. Right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Hello and welcome, Mark and Gracie. Welcome to the It's a Drama podcast. So excited Hi, to have you. you on here, guys. <laughs> Thanks for having us. We've waited a long time to get you on here. We've yep. known you for uh, online, virtually, uh, for, the, for quite a while, yep. watching you as you made your plans to move to New Zealand. And you arrived in the country and now we're in lockdown. Yeah. But <laughs> come, to, come to New Zealand, it's COVID-free. <laughs> <laughs> so we're so excited to hear about your journey and if you would just introduce yourselves to the audience and let you know let us know who you are and yeah just yeah. a little bit about okay. yourselves absolutely okay shall I go first yep I'll go first so obviously I, I'm Mark we've we've been together for 11 years well done and a couple yeah. and, and, and a couple, and a couple. And 11 plus 2 <laughs> there you yeah, go yeah, yeah, off to a good are you start, sure Mark? you thought about that there Mark <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I always get that one wrong. Um, but uh, no, so I'm originally from Leicester in the UK. I've worked as a project manager for, for 90% of, of my career. Yeah, we, we basically had this moment back in the UK where we, we thought, you know, we'd like to do something a bit different. And we obviously joined your, your group and from from various google searches and what have you and, and that did the the initial taster sessions and then really it's, it's it's evolved from there yeah i've i've become quite an avid avid follower over the the yeah. last few months and uh, as you go through that that initial planning phase it's really useful to have some some checkpoints and some sounding boards i guess in yeah. order to yeah. plan that journey but yeah i'm mark i'm grace's husband and uh, do you want to introduce yeah. yourself <laughs> i'm grace i'm mark's wife um, so we've been together nearly 13 years and have two sons who are six and one. Um, I'm a, a GP and have been for the last few years. So we talked on and off over years about, you know, going somewhere different and, and looking for somewhere somewhere new to try. And luckily my work sort of takes us lots of places. So New Zealand came up on the list, shuffled along by the COVID-19 p- pandemic and we're here thanks to a lot of a lot of guidance from yourselves. Oh, you know, I've good. been tootling back and forward to work for months listening to your podcast, sort of a bit here <laughs> and a bit there, which makes my day quite a lot more interesting, to be yeah. honest, thinking about what was coming. Yeah, oh, it's good, you, actually, Chris. because what, one of, so one of the things that, we, you know, when you're in the car with you, your six-year-old or what have you, and obviously they knew we were coming to New Zealand, they knew it was getting closer. So we often used to have the debate, should we have grown-up music or kids' music? Well, actually, the happy medium was let's have a New Zealand podcast. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's how we managed to set it up, you see. So, right. so you know, the kids know you yeah. as well. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. that's lovely that's amazing, to think that. that. Yeah. So what think made, that. why New Zealand? Have you always... Is, so obviously you just had this ad- adventurous side to you and you just was it was it you wanted to go anywhere or did you specifically want to come to New Zealand why did you choose New Zealand so I suppose work guided it a little bit um so my French if you've got a headache I'm fine but anything else more medical than that in French is a little bit lacking <laughs> so um New Zealand offered the, the language and it, it, it's yeah. very easy to come and work here in terms of kind of being registered and not having to sit more exams and things New Zealand is, is always somewhere that I've been fascinated with um, my mum lived in Australia when she was younger and sort of talked a lot about kind of being away and being somewhere different. Mark's not a big fan of creepy crawly, so Australia wasn't 
number one. And, and so New Zealand ticks a lot of boxes for us. Right. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I mean, we'd, the one thing I will say is we'd never been before. Oh, yeah, uh, I was going to say that, yeah. Um, and, and I think that was one of the first questions, actually, that I put on the, the Slack group, you know, that we have is, you know, how, how many of the people there had actually been before they made that decision to commit and, and fully go on the, that emigration journey? So we'd, ne- we'd never been, but we, we both had a, an itch that needed to be scratched. You know, there was a bit of an adventure there. Neither of us had done that post-university or, or gap year traveling thing. And I think that played a little bit of a role as well. The, there was a short list and it, it had your, you know, the, the, the common candidates on there. Everyone always says about Canada yeah. being the, the alternative to New Zealand. And, and we came very close, but it just didn't quite fit with work for either of us. For Grace, there's quite a lot of requalifying that has to be done, which obviously takes a lot of time when you've already gone through what is it, 13 years, you know, <laughs> yeah, 13 exactly. years to get yeah. there in, in the UK, putting another three years on top is a lot. And it obviously it also costs a lot of money, whichever way you do it. Europe is, was a fascinating place and lots of options there um, because we did look very closely at Denmark. The, the problem there is that Grace would have to practice in a different language. And obviously, if you're practicing medicine, you've got to be pretty fluent in whatever language you choose to do. So I think la- language definitely played a, a, a big part. But also New Zealand gives that I think that added sense of adventure. The, the, the very fact that it's that bit further away. Quite a few friends that have been here, either in gap years or, or on holidays. And it's always one of those places that stands out, even in, yeah. in the magazines, you know, you see those lovely pictures. And I think you, there's, there's that yeah. sense of, let's go and see if it's really true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's I, so true, I, I isn't agree, because it? it's like, if you're in France, it's, it's almost too easy to pack the car home. and go home. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. when we, me and Liz were living in France, we were living in Chamonix and... Uh, we just had enough. It was just like, oh, right, let's go. Well, let's yeah. just pack. And we packed everything up overnight and just went went back home. So, know? Grace, was it either of you stronger, had a bit bigger pull? Like with me and Brian, it was like me a little bit more and I had to try and convince Brian. Was that the same with you two or were you both equal? Was one of you fighting for it more or? I think we were, we were both really keen, but there are so many hoops to jump through to, to yeah. come here that part of me just thinks, oh, that's, yeah. It's a good idea, but it's in the too hard box and I'll just park that. But, you know, our, our skills lend each other quite well t- to each other. You know, I could I could sort the work bit out and the visa process from there. And then Mark could kind of project manage the rest because that's his that's his forte. Yeah. yeah. So between us, actually, we, we, were, we were quite a good team and, and made it happen in that way. Had it just been one or the other, it probably wouldn't have wouldn't have happened, no, I don't think. Yeah. No, yeah. I feel for these people that have got one as one partner has got a real big pull to go to it and do something like this mm-hmm. and the other one is just like nah it's not going to happen you just think that, yeah. that it would be so tough wouldn't it yeah, you know it, it really would it's, 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 it's like that adventurous side of you you know it's like you can talk and talk and talk about it and you never do it and then you've just got to decide we're going to do yeah. it but, so there was great. sorry Grace go on there were so many of our of our friends and, and family in the kind of the last few weeks to coming that said oh I wish I was coming I'm really jealous oh. Or I had the chance to go, you know, a few years ago and I didn't and I wish I had. And that came through so often, it convinced me we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Because you have your doubts and leaving family and friends, but so many people had so many regrets. I was like, we've we've got this chance. We've just got to go and grab it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, And who have you left behind in the UK? Um, So I'm from quite a big family. I've got three other siblings and there's a whole bucket load of grandchildren along with our two and my parents. So so we've left them who and they've they've been really broadly supportive I think because my mum lived in Australia as a, as a child she she gets it she gets the adventure she's got some really happy memories from it and although they'll miss us they're like no go go and do it you're young you're healthy you've got the chance just just go and do it yeah yeah, yeah. That's lovely, isn't it, when, so when people are behind you like that? What about you, Mark? Who did you yeah. live behind? I mean, my, com- by comparison, my, my family's a lot smaller, uh, my side of the family. So I'm, I'm an only child, um, oh. so no, no siblings, but obviously my mum and dad um, and, and grandparents as well. Yeah. I, I think it's, you know, supportive, absolutely, you know, every, everyone was. I, I think there were probably a few more difficult conversations on, on my side. And that, the main reason for that, I guess, centred around the grandchildren. Yeah. Um, mm. I'm the only source of grandchildren yes. <laughs> to, to, to my parents. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, taking, you know, picking them up and taking them to the other side of the world, I, you know, I think that was quite hard hitting. And um, obviously, 
that there were a few occasions uh, along the way where you, you do have that that guilt moment you know are, are we doing the right thing uh, you know is is it fair to take to take them but quite quite honestly you know it, it's it's been a really smooth process with the family and the family have been supportive i think they understand that certainly with your side of the family out of all the siblings if if there was a, if there was a couple that was going to do it it, it was going it's to be, be us mm. all the others have stayed relatively close to to home but i think they've they, they acknowledged that they they knew we had something that we needed to do and and, and an adventure that we needed to go on yeah. and, and so um that's that's been known by both sides of the family for quite a while now so yeah and obviously social media media, Zooms, what have you, they, they do help. Yeah. You can yeah. stay in mm-hmm. contact a lot more regularly yeah. than, than perhaps, yeah. for example, when your mum was in Australia. Yeah. Um, so that aids the process. Yeah. I think there's an element of uncertainty at the moment because of the borders being closed and yeah. having been closed quite a while. It's, it's not as if you can say, oh, you know, we're coming over in three months or, you know, to the grandparents, you yeah. know, and say, oh, come over for Christmas or something like that because... As much as they would, and they'd be there in a heartbeat, mm-hmm. there's there's a very strict process to be gone through with with MIQ and, and whatever else. Yeah. So yeah. I think that adds an element of uncertainty around when will we see them next. Um, so that's certainly for, I think for both of us, but certainly, mm-hmm. you know, for me, it's something that crossed my mind in those last few weeks before getting ready to depart the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. It's, it's never easy, is it, when you talk about leaving family? Mm. You're much better than me because I'd just be bawling my eyes out now. <laughs> thank you. For I think I, that. I think I was so dehydrated that last month before we left the UK, having to say goodbye to everybody because oh. I am a crier and just every even thinking about saying goodbye, I'd start crying. Oh. That's not actually doing it, darling. So I feel for you. Bit, yeah. It's not easy, is it? There was a little it? bit yeah. of relief, I think, once we were actually at the airport. We're like, right, we've, we've, we've done that. We know that we're sad. We know we're going to miss them. Yeah. yeah. But it's not forever. It's exactly. not the, you know, it is the other side of the world, but it's yeah. not forever. Yeah, yeah. That's that was exactly weird. Right. It, was, it was a sense of relief. It, almost when you were yeah. on the road to go down yeah. to Heathrow, this, this, this feeling of relief did yeah. come in you, after the initial, you know, the, once you've done the absolute final goodbyes, we were staying at my parents and, yeah. and, that, and that, was, that was quite difficult. And obviously it's never nice for the kids to see the grown-ups crying. No. So you, you've all, oh. you know, you're trying to all hold it together. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, the, once, once we were on the road, it was, it was this sense of relief, right? Yeah. That, you know, the goodbyes are done. Yeah. Now the adventure begins. Exactly. And, um, yeah. 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 Nice. And here we are. True. Yeah. I, I remember, you know, the uh, same thing. We 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 were leaving um, the southwest and heading up to uh, Heathrow, and it was just we had a hired car, and it was the rucksacks and everything in the back, and it was just like, oh, yeah. we've done it, you know, we're, we're there. Yeah. yeah, And it's that because it's 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 heartbreaking the goodbyes, and you, you're dreading the last ten minutes when you're about to say goodbye. I know this when you're all... sitting in the front room and like you've got you know you've got to leave at half two, and it's like twenty past, and you're like. Oh no! Let's just you know, go. It's just tick, tick, <laughs> yeah. tick, tick. It's just yeah, we, we we'd said I think oh we'll we'll aim to leave around midday. Well, well, half ten in the morning came, and it was pretty clear that we'd just be killing time yeah. and waiting for the inevitable. So it's yeah. like you know what? Come on, let's, let's go. go. Yeah. Um, and and it, that was the best way to do it. I think yeah. just yeah. just get in the car and go. Yeah. Um, oh, I've so, got yeah. so much that I want to talk to you about. But the biggest thing I want to talk to you about, well, one of the biggest things is you've also got. Well, you haven't just got two children now, have you? You've got four children, haven't you? We've got four, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, two yeah. Didn't tell ones. us about those two other two, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about your two dogs. Yeah, so um, we've got Holly and Alfie. They're two cockapoos, uh, four and two years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they are very close to being able to come and join us out here. So... Um, I mean, that there's one hell of a process you have to go through when it comes to bringing yeah. animals And I anywhere, want to talk but... about that in a minute. It's just like, but, but did you ever consider, because I, we're dog, we've got a dog as well. Yeah. Did you ever consider thinking, I'm just going to, we'll just leave them. We'll leave them with my mum and dad and we'll go. Or, or did, was it we always had... that you were going to bring them? <laughs> We had plenty of offers that Holly and Alfie are probably up there with the grandchildren amongst our family. Okay. They're very well loved. But they are part of our family. And when we could figure out the logistics and the cost and everything, it was a case of, well, we can't, we can't leave them behind. As, as, being, as pampered as they're being currently with the grandparents, you know, they, they were always going to come and join us. 
Oh, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It, it, it's amazing because my mum, I, the reason I asked that is because my mum is a massive cat lover and she's got a cat and she left her cat. I mean, mm, if, did, you, yeah. if you mention that to my mum now, she starts bawling her eyes out, doesn't she? Yeah, she just, she, she gets so upset. But yeah, I just wondered if it was ever, because we didn't have any pets when we came over and I wondered if it was, was it always a given that they would be coming or did you ever consider, well, you know, it's going to, because we'll talk about cost in a minute, but that must have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the planning phase, they were always coming. You know, when, when, you, when you receive the quotes, yeah. um, obviously <laughs> you, 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 you just glance at it and think, oh. Oof. No, no, no. They were, they are coming. They have are a nice coming. car for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But no, I mean, the thing, the thing with them, um, and we'll come on to the process in a minute. But the the, I, I think also with the kids, you know, the idea that you know, obviously James has had um, Holly, well, and and Wilf, they've both had the dogs around for virtually all their life yeah. Yeah. so the the fact that they'd be missing it, it just wouldn't be quite right and i think new zealand's made for dogs in many ways oh, you know lots of honestly, lots yeah. of open spaces yeah. lots of nice beaches yeah. um and um obviously it all formed part of the the conversation with the agency that was recruiting you i think that's what yeah. that's what um started it you know they asked the question as they put it have you got any fur babies and oh. so we just said yes uh two and so they're always factored in as part of the conversation from the yeah. very beginning really it's well, a bit I more of a commitment isn't it in that way because like you get here and it's it's not like oh i'm missing the dogs i'll go back home and see you know and then you don't come back it's like you bring in everything then aren't you you know yeah yeah okay i'm yeah. jumping yeah. ahead but let me just ask you before i go on to the to bringing the dogs over because i'm dying to know all about that process but grace so how did you did, did, what visa did you use to get over here what how was that um, so at the moment, we're on a critical purpose visitor visa, um, which is the only visa you can use, I think, to come into New Zealand if you're not a, a resident or a citizen. Right. Um, so that visa lasts for 12 months from the day that you enter New Zealand. Um, and that only allows me to work currently. Um, so for me to come and do my job very specifically at that surgery as agreed. Um, but it allows Mark and James and Wilfred to come with us. Um, as soon as we landed, we then applied for um, it's called a work to residence visa, um, which is a 30 month visa. Uh, and that will allow Mark to work and changes James and Wilfs into uh, effectively student visas so yeah. they can go to school for free. Because right. uh, although James could go to school now, we'd have to pay the full full private fees. And that's something that's often misunderstood, although the immigration department say that he could go to school. The Department of Education say, well, on that visa, you'd have to pay. Um, right. So once we're on to, on the work to residence visa, then he can go to school as as any other um, a New Zealand child can. Right. How much? And the how much are the that, fees to if you don't have a visa? How much are you looking at for a child to go to school? About twenty thousand dollars for the year oh, for primary school. Wow. Um, yeah. and more for secondary school. It's another nice car. Yeah. You, you can stay <laughs> home with a dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay with your grandma. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the idea with the work to residence visa is you've then got two years to to live in New Zealand and experience life and see what it's like. And then you've then got six months to either apply for permanent residency or arrange to go back home right. or where, wherever you've come from. Yeah. Um, I believe we can upgrade to a res uh, to a permanent residency before or apply for that before the end of the two years, if we're sure. But the general gist is do your two years, see how you feel, because it's a, a bigger commitment and more financial commitment for, to apply for residency than the, the work to residence visa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're in the process of just waiting for that 30-month visa to come through then, are you? Uh, yes, it should be through any day now, because they were waiting for, for a couple of final bits of paperwork from the medical council for me, so yeah. it should be any day now. Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. So, and then just one more question, then we'll move on to the dogs, but one more question. So from the day you decided when you sat down with that glass of wine and went, let's go to New Zealand from the day you decided <laughs> to when you get off the plane and uh, how many, how long was that? What was the time period that we're looking at? Yeah, we, we, were, we were trying to work it out, weren't we? Because I, I remember the afternoon um, and, and I think it was late January. I think it was around the third week of January. Um, and we had that conversation where it was basically, right, are, are we going to do this? Are we, are we going to fully commit? Um, and at nine o'clock the following morning, I'd rung the estate agents, put the house oh. on the market. Yeah. Um, because for, for me, 
the house was the biggest tie. You know, I mean, obviously, and, and you know, Grace had work and everything else, but I, I think for for the family unit, one of the biggest barriers to, to going is is your house because yeah. that's a where it's you've got a you got a mortgage attached to it for starters. You know, you've got to sell it to yeah. basically free up cash to make the the adventure yeah. a possibility. So um, we we thought it would take some time to to sell our house mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, Ironically, it went within, I think, 48 hours, we'd accepted an offer. Oh. So that really sped things up. Yeah. And as I say, so that was the third week of January yeah. and I we touched down... Door to door, it's probably seven months. Yeah, seven touched months. down at yeah. the end of That's July. That's pretty quick, yeah. isn't it? Mm. To change your yeah. life around like that and get to the other side of the world yeah. and, and just... It probably could have been a bit quicker, but we wanted James to sort of finish the school year and kind of get into some holidays and the house the housing market's a bit crazy in the UK so that took much longer than it should have done for a single transaction so yeah. um we needed that extra, extra cushion but seven seven months I think door to door yeah we we were really fortunate we found a buyer with no chain and and everything seemed to be move, moving nicely and and um once you've got a buyer you know you 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 want to keep that buyer so yeah. we we moved out pretty quickly mm. um, exchange those and contracts. then we yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you you ha- you have that race to the line. Yeah. Um and then we um well, we moved around various things but we did caravans, airbnbs, um all sorts really just to bide our time between May and in July. Yeah, I remember you saying on the chat, oh, we're living in a caravan, so it's got two kids, two dogs and two adults in this caravan. And I just thought, I, yeah, really, yeah. I really did feel for you. Like, you know. yeah. <laughs> it was good practice for MIQ. Yeah. Yeah. It was good practice yeah, for MIQ. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, is it true that you fainted when you had your blood test? It is, it is true. It is, yeah. So, so that was an experience. Are you a Manchester um, United but- supporter? <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm Leicester City. <laughs> Leicester City all the way. <laughs> um, but no, no, I mean that's uh, that. Yeah, yeah. The med- the medicals are quite um, intensive to to come over on mm. on whatever visa you come on, and um, it was just quite entertaining in in the fact that we we were sat in the waiting room. Grace had taken the kids into to one room to be checked over by the doctor, um, and I was waiting to see the nurse, and um, the the unbeknown to me the nurse had gone and knocked on the door to the doctor to say oh can i have some help i've got a i've got a 16 stone chap flat on the deck <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, and uh, the, the the irony is grace thought it you know it was the old ch- it was for the old chap that was in the waiting room waiting to go and have his his blood test yeah. but no it was me and um other than that uh the the, the medicals were absolutely fine but yeah, I've I've been reminded of that on several occasions by uh, work colleagues, family, and 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 now you, Liz. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it, and then I thought I'm just going to see what he says when I say this. Yeah, yeah. and it's no, even it was... funnier because Grace is a GP, so it's like <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> oh, so tell us about getting you to how how on earth do you get when you told me this on the Slack group when you said our dogs are coming with us and they're going to go on a flight that is dedicated doggy flight. But can you just tell me the process of how do you go about bringing two dogs? First of all, what sort of, are they big? Is, is it, is it, what is it again? A, a, a poo? Cockapoo. A cockapoo. Yeah. Is that a big dog or a small dog? I thought that was like a bird. No, that's cockapoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it a big or a small one? <laughs> what? Um, they're, they're, they're small to medium size. Um, uh, about seven and nine kilos, I think. So mm-hmm. they're, they're they're lap dogs, you know. They're not oh, they're, they're not dogs. these micro dogs that no. you yeah. see. No, um, they don't but, fit in handbags. But no. nor nor are they nor are they giant Labradors or anything like right. that. Right. Okay, um, it gives me an idea. But that, to be honest with you, obviously we'd never done it before. Um, you you kind of I used to travel a lot with work, and and sometimes on the continent in Europe, you'd be on a flight, and someone would get on with a dog. Um, and and be sat next to you with 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 this um, little Chihuahua or, or what yeah. have you. What in the, um, in the cabin? That, in the normal yeah, cabin? Seen, in the cabin? Yeah. So in, 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 yeah. in Europe, in Europe, that's quite uh, certainly used to be quite a common Is sight it? that you'd see the the odd one. But yeah, mm. but we obviously knew that wouldn't be possible now. Um, and the, the the agency that you'd been working mm. with had a couple of recommendations of of companies. Pet logistics companies, basically, that specialise in getting 
your pet from A to B. Yeah. Um, and and there's there's one hell of a process to go through. Um, and that the first the first thing that we realised, hence why they're not here now, is just how long it takes. Yeah. Um, so um, the first bit of advice I think we'd both give is is get someone that knows what they're doing, that can fill out the paperwork and and keep you on the right track. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's been essential, yeah. hasn't it? It's not really something you can... Uh, you prob- Some people probably could navigate it themselves, but it's so specific and so specialist that it, it's just not worth it, actually. And the price difference is, is not a great deal because most of the, the cost is in either what the vet's doing for you or in the transportation fees. The administration is a relatively small cost, but in terms of time and headaches, it's it's probably worth every penny. Yeah, yeah. And and so I think we um, we started the process pretty much straight away. Uh, so as I say, you know, let's assume early February. Um, and we were told then that realistically, nine to 12 months is the optimum time yeah. um, in terms of being able to transport a, a dog. And that's because um, to come to Australia and New Zealand, they basically have to have had a uh, a what they call a primary rabies vaccination mm. um, within, I believe it's 12 months of departure. Um, and they then have to have had a, um, a blood test uh, which shows sufficient immunity to the rabies within three months of departure, I believe it is. Mm. Uh, and obviously this is different for different countries around the world. Um, but that's... They are your, you know, once you once you're on that on the on the track, you have to be governed by those timescales. One day either side, and and they'll you know they'll reject it. So you're basically working very specifically to this this rabies vaccination program, yeah. um, and it doesn't always go according to plan, as we found out. So we had both our dogs vaccinated, um, and you, you pay the, the the handsome veterinary fees um, for for mm-hmm. the for the pleasure, um, and then they were tested. Again, you pay pay the 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 test fees only to discover that both dogs had failed the immu- the immunity test. Oh. Um, so the clock restarts. Oh, no. So um, it was at that point that we realised they weren't going to be coming with us because we mm-hmm. by this point had realised that we were going at the end of July. Um, hence the the frantic text to my parents saying, mm. "Would you like two visitors <laughs> uh, for for a few weeks?" Um, so so we 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 re ran that process and thankfully. Um, a few weeks before we we departed, um, they uh, got the the relevant paperwork in place, and and then they're due to join us in about two weeks' time. Um, well, they'll, they'll arrive in New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, so, in, did you get your money back for the first time that they failed that test? You... No, no, you you repay it. It goes on the it goes on the tab. How much is um, that? How much was it for them to have their I mean, t- jabs? Uh, by the time you've done the blood tests and the jabs you're looking at about 600 pounds for the two wow yeah and, it, and it's mm-hmm. true as, um, it's true as well that they have to speak english to come into new zealand oh yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah 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 that's right that's right um, not australia but, but it doesn't once, matter there but. <laughs> <laughs> but but once they arrive here they have to do a 10-day quarantine which we find quite amusing the fact we have to do 14 oh. days in miq <laughs> yeah. and the dogs get 10 days mm-hmm. um so hang on so, is it there yeah. do they get on a, their own little plane so they've had the vaccinations they've had the rabies things and they've been all passed for mm-hmm. that you have seen catch the pigeon mm-hmm. haven't you with muttley when he used to fly the plane no, no? i haven't oh, and right. so do, the, do they get on do, <laughs> yeah. do they get on their own plane have they got their own no, plane? No, no. So so they have a... Because um, you said it was called uh, like a pet plane and I thought like, oh, it's a plane coming over with all these pets sit- sitting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, sitting there you, smoking. You're not far off. You're not far off. I'll have a gin so, tea. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll, have, I'll have a whiskey with mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so they basically have a uh, very select number of flights and airlines, particularly at the moment, that accept pets. Um, so from the UK, the main one is Singapore Airlines. Right. Um, and there's two reasons for that. The first one is that Singapore is a virtually a halfway house between yeah. the UK yeah. and um, New Zealand. So uh, it's, it's good for a stop off. Um, but they basically have select number of flights where they run a, an aircraft that has a, a pressurized, temperature-controlled hold. So they travel in in 
right. specially designed crates that have to be uh, certified by the, the relevant aviation and, and veterinary authorities. Um, and, and that's another thing, you know, that having this third party to do the administrative yeah. side, they can also guide on that yeah. because that's where the price can really creep up. Um, so, so yeah, you have to book. And I think it's about, they, they say nine or 10 weeks ahead of when they're due to travel is kind of the waiting time to get a slot on, on a flight. Mm. So it, it's very unlikely you would ever be able to travel on the same flight as, as your pets mm. um, because of the the amount of yeah. hoops and, and the paperwork and also the wait list. Obviously, at the moment, because of the reduced flight schedule, there's uh, quite a heavy waiting list because they can only take a certain number of animals. Yeah. Right. Um, if, if you've got and, more money, do they have like economy class for them or? First well, class? yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're uh, basically um, j- joking on one side. They don't have uh, anything for the for the pets on the actual planes. But these companies do a little bit of upselling around the the treatment of the dogs and, and the, the luxuries they get, both at the, uh, the the trip down to Heathrow and the night before their flight in Heathrow, but also in, in quarantine. Yeah. So would your dog like a, a heated bed? Would it like a television? Um, would it like a sofa? Yeah. The so, so some of the some of the uh, doggy MIQ facilities or quarantine facilities in Auckland. And there's only a very specific number that are licensed. But yeah, they, they offer kind of an upgraded uh, suite uh, for, for the dogs <laughs> wow. for, their, for their 10 day stay. Gonna, so different different classes do exist, yeah. even in, in doggy air I thought there would travel. be like, just, just for the fact that, you know, if you've got more money, you could have a bigger kennel for them. Yeah. I always like think that. it would be a brilliant mm. business to be in that because... All right, you go, oh, yeah, would your dog like television? Would it like this? Would it like that? And you pay all this money. How would anyone ever know whether your dog had enjoyed the programmes <laughs> or yeah, anything like that? You know? It's watch Bolt you, or Madagascar you, yeah, or something, you, you know? You can't. Like, well, you, if you've got kids in nursery, then they can come home and tell you how horrible it was or whatever. But your dog is never going to ever going to be explained. Okay. So, you know, it's got a GoPro. You're but... on to a winner if you've got that business. Yeah. You're on to a winner and it's, you're it's so true, making. though. It's yeah. so true. I mean, even yeah. if you go away for the weekend, and, and I don't know what it's like over here, we've not done it yet, but you know, the kennels in the UK, they don't just have kennels now, they have pet hotels, yeah. basically. So it is heated beds, televisions, yeah. extra blankets, toys, what, mm-hmm. what have you. And, yeah. and I, I guess with, with pets, it's quite a, an open market, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. people love their pets. Yeah. People will, will pay for their pets, especially those where they are their children. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, exactly, yeah. 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 And, and I don't know why we're sitting here laughing because we're just as bad. We're like, oh, let's wash her bedding. She's she's had that bedding now for three days. So she's going to need it fresh. So, you know, you do, know, you, you become do. like, yeah. They, yeah. they do become like your children, don't they, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I don't know if I'd pay yeah. for a telly, though. I don't know if I'd pay for a telly. Yeah. That's, no, you know, maybe the heated blanket. I think I, I think I've paid for that before for them. Yeah, but yeah. That I'd stop at the telly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, all right. So they're not over here yet. They're with your mum and dad. So yeah. they're yeah they're they're due to depart in in about uh, I think it's twelve thirteen days from mm-hmm. now, and then they've got their ten day. Yeah. Um, that their ten day stay in in uh, doggy MIQ as we've called together, it. or are they going separate? Yeah. yeah. So so that's the that's the other thing. Um, Certain providers let you have the same crate for them to travel in so they can travel together. Others say that they'll guarantee that they're within sight of each other. But once they actually arrive here, they'll share the same the same panel because they've you know they've lived together. Yeah. So they'll um and and you get like a you know a a CCTV doggy TV so you can log in and see what your dog's up to when they're in quarantine. Oh, there you go then. That's good. So you can well, keep your eye on them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, can you imagine how excited the kids are going to be when they go and pick up, pick, pick them up? Yeah. They're going to be. Uh, well, yes. James has asked probably three times since we've been out of MIQ when the dogs are getting here. Oh. Um, so here we, and they'll be very excited when they get here. Yeah. And you know what? I think it's going to make, I don't know. I just think having a dog over here, having a pet, it's the first thing you, like when you, don't you think that when you've got your animals with you, it sort of makes it really yeah. makes it home, just doesn't gels it? You the know, unit, it just it, it yeah. does gel the unit. Mm. Yeah, it just makes that 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 complete. You know, yeah, yeah. Especially with young yeah. children like you two have got. So, and on mm. and on the and on the topic of dogs as well. Oh my God, you have come to the best place in the world for dogs. 
I have never known a nation love dogs as much as the New Zealanders love them. They love yeah. them more than children, actually, don't they, Brian? Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. They do. If you, I've told you this before, but if you're walking along down the beach and you've got your little cute kids with you and your big fat ugly dog, they will always stop and go, "Oh, your dog's nice. What breed yeah, is she?" Like, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good conversation a starter yeah. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> they love yeah. dogs. Yeah, and especially yeah. You, yeah, you guys. Got, are these guys are English. People. What did you say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dogs and Dogs and children are a great way to meet people, they aren't are, they? And start yeah. making those connections. They are. Good conversation so, starter. Oh, I'm so excited for you because that's just going to be absolutely amazing. Hmm. I'm sorry if yeah. you did book yeah. did you Did you pay for a television, Grace? Because I'm sorry if you did and now here's me going, I wouldn't pay for a television. Oh, no. <laughs> and here's their DVDs no, 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 that no. they like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a... No, they'll be fine. Stick them in one kennel together. They'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. You're more of a luxury kind of a dog yeah. pamperer, aren't you? I am. I am. But no, even I've gone for the, the relatively baseline um, expense on, on this one because it, it's not a cheap activity bringing no. the dogs yeah. over. So um, do you mind I mean, sharing realis- how much it was, Mark? Yeah, so realistically, um, you're looking at around... Uh, th- assuming you didn't have to redo the jabs, you'd be looking at around three and a half thousand pounds per dog. Right. No, it's not not as bad right. as I thought. So, so, yeah. Yeah, so it's know. about it's about seven, um, and and that is you that that's your baseline economy ticket. Yes. Uh, obviously, as I say, you can, you can go as high as you like. I'm sure. Um, they can have a stretch limo from Auckland Airport, probably, if you, yeah. if you find the right supplier. But yeah. um, no, I mean, yeah, about seven thousand yeah. pounds, um, and that that includes, as I say, that kind of helping hand uh, provider. I mean, there's loads out there. Um, you've only got to put it in Google, and yeah. that, that they they come up. Um, but as so far, you know, I'll, I'll touch wood um, until they're actually here. Oh, but they've, yeah. they've been pretty good. So yeah. um, obviously, you know, like Grace said, their fee is such a small percentage that given the amount of paperwork that they have to travel with um, and and the certificates you have to have signed by the vets in the UK and what have you, uh, it's a no-brainer, I think. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, you you don't want to get it wrong, do you, like you say, because it can can be upsetting. The costs just pile up. I I mean, we were watching the, I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago when you guys did one around comparing the costs and you were saying that vet prices aren't as bad yeah, over here yeah, as, yeah. as in the UK yeah. but as you know you know to sign a piece of paper in the UK I mean you can be looking 150 180 pounds yeah. just yeah. to yeah. just just to walk in the door yeah. um yeah. so when you're timesing it by two the whole time so, as well yeah. Yeah. um that that adds and it, it can mount up very quickly it can um but we, we've got some friends that brought a cat over and went through a very similar process and I think they said you know they paid just shy of uh, two, but that was a few years ago, but just shy of two grand. Right. Um, but obviously at the moment with the reduced flight schedules and the waiting lists, prices are at a premium. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's to be expected, I suppose, yeah. given the given the climate. I think you've done the right thing because like I say, it's, you've, you, you've, it's a fantastic country for, animal, for dogs and yeah. I think it's just going to make your beautiful little family just complete when they get here yeah. as well. Yeah, because um, it's, it's the first you know, few months is always the hardest yeah. when you move into a new country, you know, because you literally, like we were saying before, you are the other side of the world and then to all of a sudden mm-hmm. have your dogs there. Yeah. It's just, that's just... It's like when so your pillow cool. arrives, yeah. isn't it? When you know, you, when your stuff arrives and there's your pillow and it's like, oh, yeah. my pillow. <laughs> all of a that's sudden right. we're and they, home. Yeah. <laughs> They are real lap dogs, you know. You you walk in the door, they're pleased to see you. You sit down, and they want to be on your lap. They want, you know, they they want to be there with you, which is lovely. I wonder what they'll be like when you get them. I wonder if they'll be a bit miffed with you, as if like. Mm, you know, you you left us. I wonder, mm-hmm. I wonder yeah. if yeah. all over you. It'll be interesting. I think probably for a half a second, and then they they are the two of the most excitable soppy dogs you've ever met <laughs> in your life. Make sure that you uh, send us some pictures forgiven. so that when we do this podcast, I can overlay the or Brian can overlay yeah. the pictures of the dogs yeah, because be I'm just well, dying yeah. to see Film them. Film the now. reunion. Yeah. Yes. Film the reunion. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That would be yeah. great, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? All right. Yeah, so they're, they're being brought down to uh, a Napier from Auckland. Um, you know the, the company's bringing them, so it'll be quite a moment when they when they open the door Aww. and realise where they are. Yeah, because yeah. it it'll, it'll be a couple of weeks before this goes out, at least. Yeah, it, I suppose. And all so those different hopefully. smells yeah. that they're going to have and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, guys, you've literally you've how long have you been in the country? Not very long, is it? Uh, seventeen days. Seventeen yeah. days. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm really sorry that you arrived and we went straight into lockdown. It was just it was just unfortunate timing. But uh, what was it like when you woke up in New Zealand that first morning? Yeah. What, what was it like? How did you feel? It was a huge sense of relief. You know, there'd been so much stress and worry and anxiety and planning in those those final weeks, as there would be anyway, but with the added COVID yeah. bonus in in there to have made it onto the flight and be in New Zealand and nobody could take that away from us. No. It's like, oh, we've made it. The adventure starts. Yeah. Uh, uh, whereabouts did you go in MIQ? Were you in Jet Park or were you uh, somewhere else? Uh, no, we were at uh, the Ridges Hotel in Auckland. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so luckily right, after the... Right in the town centre? Yeah. yeah, we could see the nice Sky hotel. Tower. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, th- I think... If if it'd been the two of us, we'd say it was absolutely fine. It was perfect. You know, the food, one thing I will say, the staff and the food were absolutely amazing. Yeah. Were they? Um, we were yeah, in standard. a standard double room, though, which when oh, you've got right. two kids yeah. in there as well, and by the time you've got the travel cot set up and try and figure out somewhere to, you know, be able to eat your food and, and what have you, it, it was compact. It was tight. Yeah. It was, yeah. Um, and, and especially when you've then got you see people on on the various Facebook groups having a having a moan that they've you know they've got this this one bedroom suite but they haven't got a second bedroom for the the, oh, the little yeah. one to go in. It's like yeah. you know nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but but it is a lottery, and I think we had to, you know, the whole time we were just saying, you know, we're lucky to have actually a been able to come to New Zealand at the moment with the borders as closed as they are. Secondly, the fact we got an MIQ slot before the what appears to be this current rush and, and really quite um, stringent process yeah. that you're having to go through to be able to secure mm-hmm. a slot. We we kind of just, just jumped that queue. Yeah. Um, so we're very conscious of that and the fact that we're very fortunate to uh, to even be here at the moment. So even though we are in lockdown, yeah. um, we you know, we say to each other, hey, hey it's part of the journey. It's part of the process, but also, yeah. you know, at least we are here. We we, we made it. Yeah. yeah. And spring is coming and summer's coming, so yes. it just gets better and better oh, as well. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. We- the weather's been superb, hasn't it? Yeah, and and we've got a, a nice little little garden. Whereabouts um, in New Zealand yeah. are you? Who's that before? Yeah. You did, Hawks, did, Hawks Bay. Did you, did, did yeah, you tell us? I didn't about, know yeah, if we, we talked say. about that privately or whether oh, we yeah. said it on the podcast. No. We haven't actually said it, have we? <laughs> You're in Hawks yeah. Bay. Yeah, we're down in down in Hawks Bay, um, which was sold to us as one of the sunnier parts of New Zealand. So, uh, so far, it's stuck to its word. Um, okay. um, it's good though. Yeah. It's beautiful, but, uh, isn't it? Really beautiful. Yeah, we, we've we've been really, really, really lucky. And and those first few days, we managed to sort a a long term house out. We're we're currently in a property that Grace's work have sorted for the first few months yeah. um, but we managed to sort a, a rental out which okay. as you guys know that yeah. that's a process yes. over here in New Zealand yes, to go sure to go through yeah. um, we sorted the school out we did uh, and we bought a car that we haven't yet been able to pick up because we went into lockdown what, so oh. what did you get we, we've sorted it um, so we've gone for an Outlander an uh, Outlander Outlander that's yeah. Subaru Mitsubishi Mitsubishi Brian, which I know is your favourite Brian I was going to say yeah. Brian Mitsubishi 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 yeah. There you go, Brian. <laughs> um, but no, so, to be honest with you, um, it's it, there's so many unknowns that we were just like, and obviously we're paying every day for a, a rental car at the moment. Yeah. We're just like, let's get something sorted, and yeah. Um, yeah. time will tell whether it was a good decision or not. But uh, it'll be fine. I'm you can so say that with all cars. The thing is, it's like you normally get two cars for the family, like you know, because one's one's a work car and one's a family car, isn't it? Like you know, so that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. When do you start yeah. work, so, Grace? You'll need, uh, you'll need to with Outlander. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what did you say, Grace? <laughs> I start work in a week. In a week. Um, my my plan was to cycle to work because um, it's only a couple of miles and, yeah, it's good to get the exercise and things. Um, but obviously I can't buy a bike at the moment, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, it'll you, be fine. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it will. It will all sort itself uh, it just, out. It just it? does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it will do. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed and stay positive. And your one last question that I want to ask you: um, What do you hope your life in New Zealand is going to look like? You know, what 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 are you hoping out of New Zealand? Go on, you you, you go. Um, I think a slower pace of life, appreciating the now rather than always planning for the future mm. and having some adventures. Yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Mark, have you got anything to add to that? 
Um, I, I think I think for me it's it is that adventure. It, it, it's something like I said at the beginning. You know, it's it's a it's an itch that we've wanted to scratch for so long, yeah. um, and just being able to see um, a, a, another way of life. And, and obviously, although it's the you know we say it's the same but a bit different in in New Zealand, it, it, there's actually some big differences. Yes, you know, and some of those some of those cultural differences are, are quite quite substantial. So I think that'd be great, and obviously for the kids as well to be able to grow up and uh ad- adopt some of those new zealand ways of life i think um you know that's that's it's all it's all part of this this big adventure that we've yeah. got and, and hopefully we like it and and hopefully we're here for the long term yeah, yeah. oh I, th- I think that that's that's a great way to look at it as well and, and it's when people say to you once you've lived here for a little bit they go well what is it about new zealand and you just look at them and you go you you won't know until you come no. here because I can't explain it to mm-hmm. you, yeah. and and that's mm. such a hard thing because it's just those little small things yeah. that make it special sometimes. Yeah, like, oh, you know, it's, yeah. there's yeah. just yeah, and we've been made to feel really welcome yeah. since yeah. we arrived, and and I think obviously the the locals know we're new they just know you know it's that yeah. sort of place mm-hmm. where I, I think people know people, um, but they they even in those first couple of days you know they were they were very welcoming and, and lots of if ever we can help or if ever you've got any questions and yes. uh, I think that's great and obviously we're really lucky with 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 your group in that we've got people that are going through the same as us yeah. or they're just a few weeks yeah. ahead of us yes. so you know you can put you can put a call out and say you know mm. has anyone found this or does anyone know of any way you can get this yes. and instantly you're it's getting great. responses back yeah. so yeah. I, I think I think that's a really good safety net for us as well um, mm-hmm. as we navigate things like buying a house buying a car etc yeah. yeah. so yeah, all, all, all good. And uh, at the same time, you know, you want some of those unknowns. That's what makes it. You know, yes. those. If, if you knew everything, the, the adventure side would drop. Yes. So, yeah, it'd be the same um, as being back in the UK because you know it all then, don't you? So it's like, exactly, yeah. exactly. You got to, you so, got to, you so, got to so, yeah. make the mistakes yourself. It's like with your kids. You know, like Sonny's twenty years old. Don't do it like this. Do this. And he has to learn himself. Yeah. You, know, you just do. Absolutely. Yeah. And do you know what? I just yeah. right. love that. And this is this is the biggest thing. I just love that you will always, always be able to say to your kids and your grandchildren, whatever, we tried it. Yeah. We went out there and we gave yeah. it a go. And how gave fantastic it is it to be yeah. able to say that, hey? You know, because some amazing. people just don't. And it's just, you are doing it. So yeah. big hats off. And you've done it with two dogs and a one-year-old and a six-year-old. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> You get my utmost respect. The word of advice, Mark, don't wear that Leicester City shirt at the moment because that's how they know you're new, all right? (laughs) (laughs) It's true, it's true. It's taking some getting used to, actually, because they play tonight. Yeah. So that's that's really early in the morning. Um, So as someone that's watched them quite avidly Uh, over the last few years, it's going to be interesting uh, watching the time difference. But there are are channels out here. I've already sussed it out. You You can watch the Premier League quite freely out there. Have you got Spark Sport? Or have you tra- uh, I'm in the process of sorting Honestly, it. I'll, the, I'll miss tonight. The, but we'll the get Spark it. Sport app is brilliant. It, it's fantastic because it's got all the UEFA League and Champions League on it this year. Every game, mm-hmm. or, or pretty well every oh, game, you know. But the Premier League can watch every game if you want through the week. Yeah, it's great, fantastic. Right, you know? It's flipping yeah. brilliant, it is, Mark. Yeah, and you're not supposed to know this. <laughs> we'll get, 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 game. Get, the, get the VPN as well for. Uh, Match of the day. <laughs> yeah. I'm just as big a football fan as Mark, so I'm there. Oh, now. are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, the only good... Our, our very, very first date was to a Leicester City game. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. You'd yeah. love that, wouldn't you, Brian? I'd love that, uh, yeah. 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 Liz is, Liz, You'd love yeah. racing. This has actually been to Anfield, but there wasn't a game on at the time. No, I do, I, yeah. Oh, look, we're going to let you go because yeah. I'm sure that you've, you've got little children and you're tired and, and yeah. whatever you... But we just want to say... <laughs> Thank you so, so much for joining us yeah. and sharing all that information, you know, about your dogs and about yourself and your journey. It's just it's just massively helpful. Yeah. And thank you so much for being part of our group and just, you know, just contributing and just being there. And yeah, just thanks very much. Yeah, thank you for having us. And, and thank you for what, you know, as I say, it's, it's really useful to... Uh, to have that group and uh, as well as making you feel like you know some people in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, it, I, I think it, you know, it's just a really good support tool as well as a social thing as well. So yeah. it makes the transition much easier. Yeah, it does. Like Mark said, it's not just us that have kind of been involved, you know, the kids listening to the podcast about Christmas in New Zealand and Aww. things, yeah. you know, really... James is so excited for, for Christmas. He's like, 
but they have snow on their postcards, but it's summer. I know. But yeah. you see, yeah. you know, yeah. six-year-old brain thinking, okay, that sounds weird, but I'll go with it. <laughs> yes. so get it on the podcast. Yeah, it's and get a Christmas tree with summer growth on it. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's just lovely but, you know, to know all, that it's it's still been part you. of the process. It's yeah. helped yeah. definitely. Thank you very much for the first saying that because that's it's really nice to know that yeah. you know you just it, it has helped you. So I'm really really grateful for you yeah. saying that. Thank you. Well, we we were lonely when we first came here to a degree, and it's just like hopefully it helps everybody. You we're know, still a bit lonely, aren't we? Yeah, we're that's why we're keeping them on this yeah, call. We're not going to let them yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you'll have to gear up in the summer and come over and see us. Yes, like that. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, come and see it. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, Grace and Mark, and we will speak to you soon. Have a have a lovely rest of your or your week, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah. There you go. Steady. See you later. Yeah. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Hello. Daddy, I love you. Mother, thank you. Right, Mister Demille, I'm ready for my close up. Hello.